lot of what I do with the camera is um, depicting an emotion. A lot of times it's how I'm feeling. What I, what the words I, I choose to pair with the photos is typically how I'm feeling at the moment. And I try to combine it with a quality level photograph that I hope would resonate with other people. Um, because I feel like photography for me is an expression. And I remember when I didn't have that medium to express myself and I remember how it felt. So I kind of imagine how people are feeling when they can't express themselves. So maybe if you see my photo, it's like, oh, he feels like that. So it's okay for me to feel like this. And I look at other photographers or other art forms, mixed media, video, and see them answering my questions to myself. So it's a lot of questions and answers and expressions. And film photography helps me a lot um, in regards to just relaxing and just creating. And it doesn't have to be amazing. A lot of times when I use my commercial camera or my digital cameras, I feel the pressure that it has to be amazing. Every shot has to be amazing. It has to be perfectly in focus. It has to be this, it has to be that, and colors and the edit. And when you take a film camera, it's like you line it up the best way and you, you know, expose it, compose it, take the shot and don't see it for two weeks. And re that really helps me relax and just take the photo and just be a witness of the moment rather than trying to control it and make sure everything's perfect. But I mean, that's kind of how it goes when you do it professionally. If you're shooting for a company, they want to make sure it's perfect and the colors and the light and the everything. So there's a, that balance between it doesn't really matter and this one really matters. This one has to be perfect. And this one over here is just my personal archive. And if I never show it to anyone, it's totally cool. I love that photography can offer both of those. Yeah, when I think about why photography, I really just noticed how photography found me. I didn't find it. It was a photo that I saw on my best friend's wall. It really got my attention, and I'd never seen anything like that. It was a long exposure. I hadn't seen, I'd never seen a long exposure before, and then he showed me how to do it, but you couldn't do it on an iPhone, so I had to borrow my mom's camera, um, held on to that for a few months, and then she took a trip, and she's like, I need my camera back. So I had saved up some money to buy some new brakes on my car because my brakes were shot. Every time I hit the brakes, my car, my whole car would just shake and it was ridiculous and embarrassing. And But then a camera went on sale and I was like, mom, I'm, I'm gonna get this camera instead. And she was like, she wasn't the biggest fan, but now I think she understands. <laughs> um, I think the, um, the most important thing to me when it comes to photography and videography is kind of how everything is connected from, um, everybody's lives, to the jobs that we do, to the people we love, to the things that we care about. It's all connected. Everything you see and know is connected. Um, and that's really fascinating to me. Even like the oxygen molecules in the air. Strawberries need the same oxygen with a little bit more carbon and these plants. And it's like everything is connected. Everything you've ever seen and known is connected. And I see that sometimes in my photos, especially when I witness the evolution of an approach. So if I'm approaching a photo with reflections in mind, like my favorite reflection photo three years ago, I still love it, but my favorite ref photo reflection from last year is like probably one of my favorite photos I'll ever take. But it's still a reflection, so the idea of reflection has evolved. And then when I think about photography as me expressing myself, that in itself is a reflection. Like the photos I take are a reflection of what I'm thinking and feeling inside. So that kind of brings it back to how everything is connected. I think it's really important to me to show others what's possible especially when you have the determination, the de dedication, the work ethic, personality, you know, the humility to uh, chase it. 
and, and uh, really just be, a bit, be about something and go after it. You know, it's, it's possible. It's really possible. Because if I can do all this as a photographer, content creator, um, just having started three months ago, now I have my own studio. I mean, granted, like, having my own studio in this particular building with these particular windows, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't visualize that like over and over and over again for years in a row. I really did. So it's, it's extra rewarding to me now to see it coming true and coming to uh, reality. And I also like recognize that my dad, like my parents did everything they could to expose me to the possibilities. Like we didn't have a lot growing up, but they made an effort, an extra effort, so that I knew that it was more to the future than playing sports and making music or just going to college. Like they made me understand that I could do whatever I put my mind to. And they always, always reiterated and re reinforced it and reminded me and um, I think in a way I was able to like carve my own lane and like do it my way and kind of figure it out as I go and I'm still figuring it out but I don't know it's my unique journey and I think it's a responsibility to share with other people so that they can make a quality decision about their future or about their situation instead of listening to society or listening to whoever it might be in your ear that day and sometimes your parents are the ones that are giving you the wrong advice but they love you and they want they just want the best for you so yeah. Yeah, so a lot of times I, I try to visualize things or I try to look ahead, but then sometimes the universe reduces you to just being a witness of the moment, which is perfectly fine. It's a great gift. When you, in, in a lot of times you don't even notice you're witnessing it in the moment until later, but every now and then you do. The, the Chicago Bean photo is definitely one of those times. I was in Chicago, it was about 8 a.m. It was the last day of my trip. And prior to coming to Chicago, I knew, I just, I said, I want to get the bean with some snow on it by myself. I remember I told that to a bunch of people and everybody said, yeah, man, yeah, right, good luck. It's the biggest tourist spot, it's never gonna happen. That last morning, I think my flight was like at 11. I woke up around seven, and I remember looking at the window and seeing how bright it was, pulled back the curtains, and there was this big, chunky, chunky snow just falling. And I immediately, <laughs> I immediately looked to my girlfriend and I was like, let's go, like right now. We're not, I, I, didn't, I don't even think I brushed my teeth, because I, I didn't want the snow to end before we got there. Called an Uber, went straight to the bean, looked at it a couple of times. I, got, I took a bunch of photos in that spot. But then I moved around, moved around, and then when I saw the composition, I knew, I was like, oh, this is it. This is what, I, this is what I've been waiting for. This is what the whole trip is gonna mean to me. I was there for work, but I knew this photo is gonna live with me for a long time. And it's, to this day, I think it's like top five. If not, like, it could, yeah, it's definitely top three, actually. Top three photos personal favorites that I've ever taken, work or not. One of the most important things that I tell myself to remember is that I wasn't given the gift to create just to create for myself and to keep it to myself. It's important to me that I remember that these creations, this creativity that I was gifted is a form of self-expression, but it's also important for me to inspire others. Whoever cares to watch, I hope that I'm inspiring you in some way to 
explore the possibilities of your life, express yourself, figure out what matters to you and your core values. Because that's what makes us who we are. And it's important to never lose sight of who you truly are in that, in that truth. So in a sentence I shorten it to create to inspire. And those are three words that I hope to never stray too far from in this journey of creativity. All the creators in the DMV, be sure to consider Creative Hand Studio and stay tuned for further events, photo shoots, and all things creative.